Hey there. Welcome to Husky Works here at the University of Washington. I'm Pranav Bhagwatala, the manufacturing lead. Our workspace? It used to be a kitchen, but instead of dishing out pizzas, it now dishes out planes. This is where we assembled UW-21 Dragonfly, our aircraft for the AIAA DBF 2021 competition. To find out about how we did it, stay tuned as we go through the design, the manufacturing, and the testing of this aircraft. Emphasizing different competition score and performance benefits, such as predict capacity and endurance, four initial configurations were evaluated. Based on analytical calculations, for the same wing area, a tandem wing offered a superior lift to drag ratio and increased endurance, vital for the payload weight of Mission 2 and time of Mission 3. Though offering a drag penalty, a rounded rectangle cross section was adopted for the fuselage to improve manufacturability and increase the payload capacity and serviceability. To reserve the space afforded by the rounded rectangle, a monocoque structure with selective bulkhead additions was selected for the final competition fuselage. Based on research and in-house materials testing, carbon Kevlar, combining sufficient strength with low weight, was used for this airframe. During aerodynamic testing, however, an internally ribbed prototype with foam skin was utilized for expedited manufacturing and evaluation. Offering a balance between the thrust required for mission to take off and cruise speed, and the efficiency required for Mission 3 Endurance. Trace studies led to the selection of a tri-motor configuration. After review of available databases, several motor prop and battery combinations were evaluated on a static thrust stand, and the end efficient FPV drone motors from iFlight were selected, powered by a pair of A-cell batteries. Data from the propulsion trace studies allowed estimates of thrust to weight to be made, combined with geometry-based drag, maximum lift, and design constraints. The airframe was then sized for a 10 square foot wing area, with an initial estimate of 37 pounds for a maximum takeoff gross weight. In designing the sensor, stability was the utmost concern along with packability within a square container. Three designs were initially considered. RPG fins were compact, full body fins were easy to 3D print, and retractable fins offered superior stability within the same cross-sectional area when stored. Due to a rural clarification, however, Fitz elliptical tail fins were selected. Analysis in Open Rocket revealed that for Fitz fins, an elliptical design most efficiently moved the sensor's center of pressure behind the center of gravity, yielding maximum aerodynamic stability for any given sized fin. Barring minor manufacturing changes, the aircraft geometry is digitally represented in the 3D. The preliminary and detailed design phases flushed out the wing placement, tail sizing, mounting structures, and aerodynamic fairings for the 8 foot by 5 foot aircraft. The structural spars to the wings were mounted to the fuselage via 3D printed wing boxes optimized for weight and end topology. Carbon Kevlar skin served as a primary structural member, but wood mounts were designed for the mounting of motors. For stability purposes, the batteries were mounted in the nose of the aircraft, and to provide access for troubleshooting, the electronics were positioned above the deployment mechanism in the bottom bay. For Mission 2, the plane was optimized to carry 18 1.25 pound sensor containers stored both forwards and rear of the bomb bay doors, minimizing any changes to the center of gravity of the plane producing a takeoff weight of 44.8 pounds. The sensors were protected by a polyurethane foam that absorbed the impact from the 10-inch drop. The plane was expected to take 103 seconds to fly the course carrying 18 sensors. The position of the bomb bay doors was chosen so the winch mechanism would be centered at the CG of the aircraft to reduce any moments that the sensor would apply on the plane. The spool is chamfered so the cable would be evenly wound around it and act as a guide for consistent deployment. The sensor is 18 inches long with three 10 watt LEDs, which would allow it to be clearly seen from the ground and a steel weight increase in the total weight of the sensor to one pound. For mission three, the plane was expected to be to make 17 laps with a takeoff weight of 24.3 pounds. To reduce the weight of the aircraft's electrical systems and offer system flexibility, a Maytech flight controller was utilized. Though it did not provide any stabilization input, it offered streamlined control of channel mixing, increased channel number, and black box recording of instrumentation telemetry. To reduce load on the pilot, independent electronics were installed to control the bomb bay doors and sensor deployment mechanism from a second transmitter. Now that you've heard all about the design of the Dragonfly, it's time to see how we built it to spec. First, we built a mold for the composite frame, and we used a vacuum-assisted wet layup technique to make the fuselage in two halves. These halves were joined together using 3D printed and laser cut structures. The wings were made and attached similarly. While these videos skipped a few steps, we ended up with a flight ready composite aircraft. As is seen in the three view to real life comparison, the only major difference is that the CAD shows the winglets attached, 
while in reality, due to weight, the winglets were not attached. In order to ensure that the dragonfly was ready for flight, a full pre-flight checklist was performed to ensure that all systems were working as designed. This included, but was not limited to, a control surface check, a static thrust test, and a wingtip loading test. In addition to the Go standard pre-flight checks, the and sensor deployment and retrieval and mechanism was tested. Note that since there was no airflow to keep the sensor stable, the retraction took several attempts. This would not have been the case in flight, due to the airflow keeping the sensor in line with the longitudinal axis of the dragonfly. When it flies, we won't have this problem. After the pre-flight checks were done, it was time for the inaugural flight of the Dragonfly. Unfortunately, on the sensor deployment mission, the Dragonfly ran into an undiagnosed issue where the banking would not change heading. This led to a crash and totaled the airframe for the remainder of the competition year. Due to a lack of shop access caused by the COVID-19 pandemic, the damages were not repairable within the remaining time. While we were not able to show the sensor being deployed and retracted from the aircraft during flight, we have footage of stable sensor flight from testing off of a drone. However, with the competition version of the Dragonfly out of commission, the team had a bit of fun taking the aerodynamic prototype out for a spin. Literally. On behalf of the Husky Works team, we would like to thank the AIAA for putting on this year's competition. We would also like to thank all of our sponsors for supporting the team. This would not have been possible without all of their generosity.